With that, I welcome you to today's edition of The Spirit Life with Apostle Emmanuel. And today, I came to quarrel. Okay? I came to quarrel. Somebody said, oh, but well, you always, and I'm not always quarreling. Today, I came to quarrel. And my quarrel, I'm picking up with Donson Oyeka, um, a Christian religious singer uh, who I believe um, I need to raise this um, concern publicly around uh, because he's not listening to instruction. He's not, he's not listening to rebuke. Don't say, do you really believe in Jesus Christ? Do you? Do you believe in Jesus Christ? Because many of the songs you've sung, literally 80% of them, do not have anything to do with the message of our Lord Jesus Christ. In fact, it opposes our faith in Jesus. Oh yes, it does. How do you say, as a music uh, um, um, uh, you know, minister, that you were inspired by the Holy Spirit to sing a song with lyrics and words that contradict the revelation of the Word of God. For example, you came up with a song that says fragrance to fire. You know, you, 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 you know, this is my song, it turns from fire. Please play, I'm gonna share on the screen. You can go through a few of the lyrics there for yourself, you can see it there. It turns to fragrance and it turns to fire, and then this is my battle, blah blah blah. And then you say, you know, and boom, all of it. You say that the response to your worship when it goes to the Father is noises, thundering, earthquakes, and lightning. How is that possible? How is it possible? Let me show you, you know, something. First Kings chapter 19. Let's go to verse 11 to 13. First Kings 19, verse 11 to 13. And this is not semantics. Don't tell me it's a, it is not semantics. And it's not just a song. I before I go to First Kings, I want to show you something else. And this is very, very important. Ephesians chapter 5. Let's read verse 18 and 19. Ephesians chapter 5, verse 18 and 19. This is a very, very dangerous matter. Very dangerous. Very dangerous. Verse 18 says, uh, Ephesians 5, verse 18, to be precise. Yeah, I got it. So, verse 18 says, Do not get drunk on wine, which leads to debauchery. Instead, instead, be filled with the Spirit. Why? Or how, rather? He says, speaking to one another with psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs, or songs from the Spirit. Sing and make music from your heart to the Lord. That's the NIV. You can read the same thing in the Amplified Version of the Bible. He says, be filled with the Spirit and tells you how to be filled with the Spirit. He says, sing spiritual songs. So it's not just song. It's not just a song. It's not just singing. It's a dangerous thing. For you to sing a song that is contradictory to the revelation of the word of God. Because you will not be filled with the spirit. And why must you be filled with the spirit? Because when you are filled with the spirit. You will not fulfill the desires of the flesh. When you are filled with the spirit. You will pray like God wants us to pray. When you are filled with the spirit. You are empowered from within. Why? Why? Would you allow yourself, child of God, to be misled by a person who is supposed to be a Christian religious singer? Because I'm not going to call him a gospel singer. Because a gospel singer is a person who sings songs according to what is written in scripture. According to the revelation of the word of God. 1 Kings chapter, uh, chapter 19. Let me read verse 11 to you. 1 Kings 19. I read to you verse, from verse 11 to 13. So you can understand why this is a very, very serious matter. Verse 11 to 19. I mean, 1 Kings, I read to you from the Amplified Version of the Bible. You say, oh, you go between the NIV, the Amplified. I have King James as well, but I want a version that's easier. So I don't have to do too much explanation already. So verse 18 of 1 Kings chapter 19, no, verse 11 says, um, And he said, Go out and stand on the mount before the Lord. This is God talking to Elijah. And behold, the Lord passed by. 
and a great and strong wind rent the mountains and broke in, broke in pieces the rocks before the Lord. But the Lord was not in the wind. And after the wind, an earthquake. But the Lord was not in the earthquake. After the earthquake, fire. But the Lord was not in the fire. And after the fire, a sound of a gentle stillness and a still small voice. When Elijah heard the voice, he wrapped his face in his mantle and went out and stood in the entrance of the cave. And behold, he came a voice to him and said, What are you doing here, Elijah? What are you doing here, Elijah? Oh, shut. I feel the I felt like the glory of God just passed in front of me. I felt the light just shone in front of me right now. What are you doing here, Elijah? What are you doing here? A still small voice. The earthquake, the lightning cannot be a response from God to you. Why is that a response? What for what? I want to show you something else. You sang a song and you called it Yah. You said that from generation to generation that there has been no name that fits God. A name to be called. From generation to generation, including the last 2,000 years, where the book of Colossians tells us that it pleases the Father that in Jesus should the fullness of the Godhead dwell bodily. You said no name has been given to him. And yet the Bible tells us that under heaven, there is no other name that has been given by which a man must be saved. And yet the Bible tells us that there is no name, that the name that was given to Jesus is above every other name. How then do you now say that there is no name that fits God from generation to generation? How is that possible? How? 1 John chapter 5 verse 13. 1 John chapter 5 verse 13. It's on the screen. As you can read it there. He said that these things are written. He said, I write this to you who believe in, trust in, and and rely on the name of the Son of God. On the name of the Son of God. Yeah. So that you may know that by him you have eternal life and yes eternal life i want to even go to verse 11 and say and this is that testimony the evidence that god gave us eternal life and this life is in his son jesus christ that son of jesus has a name that son jesus has a name he was given a name i want to i want to read john chapter 20 verse 31 John chapter 20, verse 31. And that name is not Yah. It is not Yah. That name Yah has a root in a Gnostic gospel 300 AD after Jesus Christ. That name is not Yah. John chapter 20, verse 31. Only John chapter 20, verse 31. And those of you Christians who are following him to sing and you're saying, oh, I feel the spirit. Oh my God, I felt the power. You didn't feel any spirit though. I'm sorry for those of you around the world. I went a little, you know, Nigerian dialectic there. It's, you are not feeling any spirit from that. There's no spirit there. That is all in your flesh. That's all in your mind. It's not the spirit. I minister in the spirit. So I know when the spirit is moving. It's not in the spirit. John 20 verse 31. Because a lot of Christians sometimes think that, you know, because they feel something, then it's the spirit, it's not the spirit. Verse 31 says, But these are records, uh, this written record, um, these are written records in order that you may believe that Jesus is the Christ, that Jesus is named, is the Christ, the anointed one, the Son of God, and that through believing and cleaving to and trusting and relying upon Him, you may have life in His name. Jesus. That you may have life in his name, Jesus. I want to take you to Matthew. Let's go to the book of Matthew. 
And I want to read to you um, Matthew chapter 1. And I'll read to you verse 21. He says, she will bear a son. The Amplified Bible again. And you shall call his name Jesus. You shall call his name Jesus. Jesus is the Greek form of the Hebrew Joshua, which means Savior. For he will save his people from their sins. This is preventing them from failing and missing the true end and scope of life, which is God. Jesus. Jesus has a name. It is a name that was given to him above all other names. He says that the name of Jesus every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of the Father. Why is it you that first get tells the name Yah? He said, and he said, his name is Yah. He said, no name fits you. And you ask the Lord, what name fits you? He said, Yah. Acts chapter 9. And I read to you verse 22. This is when Apostle Paul was on his way to Damascus. And he encountered a lightning that shone from heaven and struck him. And he fell on the floor. And then, you know, he asked um, a question. Because Paul was now going around persecuting Christians on his way to Damascus. And um, in Acts chapter 9, uh, apparently we read, uh, verse. Uh, I want to read to you verse, verse 4. Let me start to you from verse 3. And um, it says that now as he traveled on, he came near to Damascus and suddenly a light from heaven flashed around him. And he fell to the ground and he fell to the ground. Then he heard a voice saying to him, Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? Harassing, trouble and molesting me. And Saul said, who are you, Lord? And he said, I am Jesus. It's here. It's here. It's here. I am Jesus, whom you are persecuting. I want to read it to you from the King James Version. And he says in verse 5, And he said, Who art thou, Lord? And the Lord said, I am Jesus. I want to read to you from the New International Version. Verse 5 of Acts chapter 9. He says, Who are you, Lord? Saul asked. I am Jesus, who thou persecuted. I want to read to you from the New American Standard Bible, verse 5, Acts chapter 9. And he said, who are you, Lord? And he said, I am Jesus. I am Jesus. How then do you get told, I am Yah? How? How is it? In the Greek rendering, I am Jesus. How is it you told? I really was very concerned because in your songs you are leading God's people to faithlessness. The Bible says that which is not of faith is sin. That which is not of faith is sin. And your songs are causing Christians to make confessions that are not of faith. Jesus said, I please the Father always. And so the Father remains and abides with me because I please him always. John 8, 29. The Bible tells us in Hebrews chapter 11, verse 6, without faith, no man can please the Lord. You are leading God's people to walk outside of faith. And the Bible tells us, if you are carnally minded, you live and speak and engage and pray and do whatever you do by your sensitive perception, what you can feel, think and judge. He said, you are not walking in faith. And if you don't walk in faith, you walk in the flesh. If you walk in the flesh, you are, you are, you are carnally minded. And to be carnally minded, the Bible tells in the book of Hebrews, you are God's enemy. I charge you, child of God. Please, I beg you. Don't let these so-called religious Christian singers mislead you to make confessions that are faithless. That will cause you to contend and oppose your own faith. To speak words that are contrary to scripture. Until Don Simon Yekon. We drag these kinds of lyrics and studies the word of God to show himself a workman that need not be ashamed. 
but correctly dividing the word of truth, he should not come across and put himself as a Christian singer, a gospel singer. That is error. What do you what what does he require before you should come out and sing to lead God's people? What does he require? I'll tell you what he requires. So you can use to say, okay, how then do you know? This is what it must require from you. Because not everybody should come in and sing to, for God to, to, to God's people. Not everybody. Not everybody. I want to read that to you because it's important. It's in the book of Hebrews. I want to read it to you very quickly. Not everybody. Pastors, as you listen to me, do not give your pulpits to people to lead singing who have not established themselves in the word of God. Who haven't established themselves in the word of righteousness. Babes in Christ who are not acquainted with the word of righteousness. They should not be put in charge of God's people. Whether as singers or as ministers in any form. I'm calling out Don Yoko as an example of many others. Who said the Lord inspired you? The Lord does not inspire you. Satan has inspired you. The God of this world has inspired you, not our Lord Jesus Christ. Right now, for a lot of you who are listening to me now and thinking, how do we judge then what songs should be right? Or how to sing songs that are in line with scripture? I'll tell you what to do. Use the scripture as your lens. Use the word of God as the lens. Use the revelation of the scripture as the lens. Use the revelation of our Lord Jesus Christ as your lens. Please, I beseech you. That you may rise up as an edifice and be filled with the Holy Spirit. And the filling of the Holy Spirit does not mean you shake and fall and that's not it. That's not it, what it means to be filled with the Holy Spirit. What it means we feel is, is to have power in your words. Is to make utterances that bring solutions and cause things to happen. That's what it means we feel with the Spirit. To pray and speak as God is speaking. That's what it means we feel with the Spirit. For the Bible said, and He spoke with spirit and authority, with power and authority. That comes from the Spirit. May God help you to walk in the Spirit as you live in the Spirit. I pray for you today in the name of Jesus that the inspiration of God's word will come to you mightily. In Jesus' name, amen. Until I see you next time, God bless you. Amen.